Out of relationship, churches struggle and often fail. 2.7 million church members become inactive every year. And half of all U.S. churches added no new members in the last two years. Why have so many churches become irrelevant, distant, and ineffective? We imagine that the success of another church will be will be to our detriment. We can contain ourselves in our own little property and, and not know who's out there. A healthy church is in relationship with its community, transforming lives and reproducing itself by supporting a church plant or daughter church. What we want to do is get the congregation to understand the shape of its community, who's out there, what they need, how they can help. The idea we came up with is, a, is a Neighbors Helping Neighbors Sunday. On this Sunday, we have an abbreviated worship service, no longer than a half hour. And we break down into teams and we go into the neighborhood to help people who, uh, who need help. Well, let me tell you about Pablo. Pablo is a pack rat. He went to garage sales and he bought things and he stored them away and he put them in his backyard until his, his backyard was just overrun with all kinds of junk. Somehow we got connected with him and we began to clean up his backyard. We took pickup load after pickup load after pickup load out of his backyard. In fact, it took us two or three Neighbors Helping Neighbors Sundays finally to empty his backyard of all the junk that was in there. And Pablo is, is just blown away by this. So he starts coming to church um, and then he comes back and then he comes back. But he's introdu being introduced to Christian people and he's being introduced through them to the Lord Jesus Christ. And we are very hopeful, we are very hopeful that the Lord will open his heart and, uh, and convince him to become a Christian. In relationships, friends can help us see healthy truths about ourselves, where we are and where we're going. An assessment team can do the same for a church. When I come in with um, an assessment team to a church, I'm on a fact-finding mission. We just really try to find out what is going on, um, their perception of the church, where they think that um, they're strong, uh, where they feel that they might need to improve, and we take all of that information then and we give them um, feedback. And so if there's an issue, uh, God brings about the opportunity then for it to be addressed. One woman that I witnessed stood up before the whole congregation and said, you know, I'm sorry, I sinned, you know, please forgive me, I've been talking. And that was just powerful, you know, I remember sitting and crying and saying, God, you know, this, you, you have released this church. A healthy reproducing church gives of itself, sacrificially, to plant new churches in order to reach new people for Christ. What we began to do was to develop a vision for bringing in leaders and planting new churches in different neighborhoods, in different communities. And we, we saw right away that would be a costly thing. And we didn't have buckets of money or a lot of resources, but bit by bit, my congregation was generous with themselves. We would give family or two to different church plants. We would host interns and residents to give new church planters an opportunity to acclimate. We would bless them as they went out and very much believe that their success was our success and they would leave a, leg a legacy in this city in a way that we could not. If we say we trust God with our death, why can't we trust him with our life? And that same thing is true for churches. God uses relationships between leaders, believers, and churches to grow His kingdom. And He blesses relationships with more relationships. Uh, what Paul writes to the Thessalonians, he says, what is our joy or our crown, our, our, our glory on the day of Christ, if it's not you? You are our glory and joy, writing to them these these people that he has shared the gospel with and their lives have been transformed by hearing that good news. So the, the, the joy of church planning, the exciting thing, is particular people. So I think of three young guys, Chad and Jeff and Anthony, and uh, doing Bible study just with the three of them and they were all telling me about the, the thrill of tagging and graffiti. And it's not just putting their name on a wall, it's the whole lifestyle. And they were saying, being a Christian is boring. 
And it, we, so we looked at something from the life of the Apostle Paul about all his shipwrecks and being beaten and all this kind of stuff. They said, okay, well, that's not boring. Not necessarily all good or not something I want, but it's not boring. And then just a few days later, all three guys came up to me and they said, there's a, a playground that's on this church property that we rent, but there's this little playground that's all kind of run down. And they said, we'd like to paint that. So they were saying they wanted to use their spray painting skills to do something good. And that quick of a transformation was really surprising. And now then uh, we talked about what it means to be baptized and all three of them said, yeah, I think I'm ready to be baptized. I know what it means. I want to die to my sin and come alive in Christ. Please pray that many more will become a part of relationships that God is using to develop and bless synergistic leaders, contagious believers, and healthy reproducing churches.